Welcome to the Crisis Power Struggle Multiplayer Level Creation Tutorial, presented to you by Crytek. In this tutorial, we'll show you how to make a multiplayer power struggle map for the game Crisis. The first thing you have to do after you come up with an idea for your map is to set up some basic terrain. To do this, enter the Modify tool and select Raise Lower Terrain. Click the left mouse button on the ground and move the mouse to make the ground raise up. As you can see, in no time at all, something resembling a hill can be formed. The Terrain Editor is a very simple and easy to use tool, and with a little practice, you'll be able to quickly and efficiently create realistic terrain, as you can see here. The Smooth tool can be used to remove hard edges in your terrain and to smooth out steep slopes. As you can see, it's very easy to create a nice little hill like this one. Now we have our hill. Let's actually make it look like a hill. To do this, we need to use the Layer Painter tool. Select a suitable terrain material and paint it over the ground. Now we have replaced the grass texture with a nice brown pebbled texture. But for our little hill here, we need to pick a good cliff texture. In this example, I chose Cliff White Gray out of the available library. For painting areas like mountains and cliffs, it's useful to set up a slope range for your material. In this example, I've chosen a range between 27 and 90 degrees. Now when I paint the terrain, you'll see the texture only appears on parts of the terrain sloped within the angles we previously defined. As you can see, this makes terrain painting very quick and easy, with great results. Now we have finished preparing our area, we need to place some vegetation. To do this, open up the Vegetation tool and select the palm tree. Hold Shift and click on your map to place the palm where you want it. You can scale the palm with Alt and rotate it with Control alt More palms can be placed using the same procedure. Now let's place some grass down. To do this, just select your grass vegetation from the menu, and with quick Shift clicks, I can place it down wherever I want to. And to finish off, let's place some bushes. Just select the bush you want and place it in your scene. And now you see we have created a nice little natural and realistic looking area. Here are a few examples of scenes with finalized vegetation. Another important tool for creating the structure of your level is the brush tool. Simply drag and drop a brush out of the level library. In this case, a stone. You can scale a brush, rotate a brush, and move a brush. Brushes have different forms and shapes, from a wall, to a whole building, all the way down to a simple sandbag. Once you have finished the brush placement in your level, it could look something like this. The basic game elements in Power Struggle are stored in the Prefabs library. A prefab is a group of objects and entities, in this case, a spawn bunker. To create a prefab, select all the objects you want to be in it and open the database view. Switch to the prefab library tab, then select the correct library. Now, save it by selecting Make From Selection from the prefabs menu and type in a name. If you use the existing prefabs in the library for your level, then you don't need to do any level setup or scripting to create a fully functional power struggle map. Both teams in your Power Struggle map need some basic prefabs set up in your level so they can play. Firstly, let's place a headquarters. Open the Objects tab of your roll-up bar and select Prefabs. Open up the Prefabs library and drag and drop a headquarters in. 
The headquarters is the main game objective and has to be destroyed by the enemy team. A team-specific barracks building will be the main spawn area for each team and cannot be taken by the enemy. You can also use this building to buy equipment and weapons. Auto turrets are placed as the defense to your base and must be destroyed by the enemy team. A spawn bunker is a secondary place for teams to spawn and can be captured by either team. The prototype factory is used to collect alien energy. With enough energy, players can buy advanced weapons that will allow them to destroy the enemy headquarters. Alien crash sites are the source of alien energy. When it is captured, it will feed energy to your prototype factory. Spectator points are found in the Entity tab of the roll-up bar inside the multiplayer folder. As the game is played, these points are used to watch the match. The level boundary is a combination of two entities. An area shape and a multiplayer forbidden area entity. You need to link the shape to the entity using the pick function when you have the area selected. If everything is set up correctly, the player will be killed when he leaves the area shape. To make your level work in pure game mode, you need to follow a few steps. First, create the surface texture. Next, export to engine. To create a mini-map, open up the terrain section of the roll-up bar and select the Minimap tool. The Minimap helper will appear. Drag the blue helper to the middle of your map and press the Use New Minimap Area button. Change the resolution to 2048 and set the camera height so it covers the whole area of the level. After that, press Generate Minimap. You will need to find the two files that are generated in the Game, Screenshots, Map folder of your game. You need to rename the XML file to match the name of your level. Then copy both files into your level folder. Open the XML file with a text editor. Add a metadata start string. the game role type, and the metadata end string. Now, save the file. When you load up the game, your level will appear in the level rotation list.